biggest obstacles that we face, the chief obstacle that we face with regards to getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with regards to getting to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and with regards to actually finding a state of inner peace in our life is our own nafs, our own ego. This nafs that we have, it's a part of us and it is also an enemy within us. That many, as, as many of the great sages have told us that the nafs between your two sides is worse than 70 shayateen, than 70 devils. It is the reason why even in the month of Ramadan when the shayateen are locked up, why we may still have a propensity to commit sin or a propensity to talk bad or a propensity to still be lazy. It goes back to the nafs. It is the reason in our life why we are unable to control our anger and we are unable to maintain peaceful homes and peaceful home environments with our spouses and with our children. It is the reason why when we are going out and about throughout our days, why sometimes our desires are not able to be controlled and to be tamed. It all goes back to this nafs. But as we progress throughout life, you and I can age in the material world. We can age physically, but it doesn't mean that we are maturing spiritually. The two are very, very different. Somebody has to actually put effort in to mature spiritually and put effort into taming our nafs if we really want to be making true spiritual progress. So it will continue to be the number one enemy that we have. The number one reason why we have so many problems in our life will continue to be the nafs until we start to actively work on disciplining this nafs. And even then, the struggle continues. It's a lifelong struggle. But the main thing is that we have to be ready to take part in that struggle. It is known as a spiritual jihad, a spiritual struggle that we have to take. And just like the physical struggle, it's not easy. There's days where we might win, and then there's days where our nafs might win. There's days where it will have an advantage over us, and there's days where we will have an advantage over it. But the first thing in order to really begin this process of disciplining the ego, of disciplining the nafs, is to even understand what are we taught, what is the nafs? What exactly is this, this entity, this soul, this ego? There's various translations for it. The lower self is how it's often translated. The lower self, the ego that we have, this is essentially your nafs. And you can think about it in stages, that there is a nafs which is known as the nafs al-amara, the evil commanding soul, the evil commanding part of us, which is animalistic in nature, which inclines towards carnal appetites in nature. And this nafs comes out even as someone progresses into the later spiritual stages, it can still come out. It can still rear its, its animalistic head when it wants to. But that's the first nafs. And then it, you continue to put discipline in, to continue to work on worshiping Allah, to continue to work on teaching the nafs that it does not submit to its own desire, but it submits to what Allah wants. And the more you and I get are in accordance with what Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have sent down, the more at peace we will be. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, that none of you truly believes until his or her desires are in accordance with what I've brought. Not only the actions, but literally what you and I intend to do, what we want to do inwardly, outwardly, at the level of desire has to be in accordance with the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to attain this state of truly perfecting our Iman and truly perfecting our belief. And so it, the nafs will try to hold us back from all of these different forms of, of spiritual progress. So you and I are, are in a situation where we're talking to someone and then they say something we don't like. And then we just wanna lash out at them, start yelling, start arguing. That anger, where's that anger coming from? It's coming from an undisciplined soul because the most disciplined of disciplined souls, the Sayyid of all of creation, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was able to control his anger entirely. He only got angry for the sake of Allah, not for the sake of his own, for the sake of his own nafs. And his, he was teaching the Sahaba in this mission to perfect their character, how to control their anger. What is the majority of the reason why we have issues in our homes, issues with our spouses, issues with our children? Largely is because of anger because we're unable to control ourselves. When that argument begins, we can't, we don't know what to say. We don't know what rather what not to say. We just wanna say everything that comes to the tip of our tongue. That's an uncontrolled nafs. That's, that's an example. That when we are on our phones, when we're on social media, we see an image that comes up that we sh really shouldn't be looking at. But 
we let our gaze la we, we let our gaze look, and now it impacts us. That a black spot is created in the heart. What is that? That's the nafs when it's not controlled. We know we should be waking up in the morning, in the early morning these days, very early for Salat al-Fajr. And we just let ourselves constantly sleep through it. Or we have a desire to wake up even earlier to pray that the Hajjad prayer, but we don't prioritize it. Why? Because we just want to sleep and sleep. That's the nafs. It doesn't like it doesn't like early mornings. It doesn't like waking up. It doesn't like any real restraint. It doesn't like it. We, we know we should only be eating a certain amount of food per day, but we continue to overeat three meals plus two snacks plus this plus that plus this and until we've had seven different meals in one day. What is that? That's the nafs. Because the nafs doesn't like to be restrained. It doesn't like to be held back. And we live in a society which teaches you the opposite of restraint. This is not a restraint society. This is a society which tells you, obey your desires, obey your thirst, go ahead and follow whatever desire you and I have. But Allah says in the Quran, have you seen the one who takes his desire as his Lord or their or her desire as their Lord? That that's not, we cannot take our desire. Either you and I are worshiping Allah or we're worshiping something else. Everybody is worshiping. Everybody is in a state of servanthood or servitude or slavery to someone. We want to be Abdullah. We don't want to be that slaves to our own nufus or slaves to our own desires. But many times that happens. Anytime we prioritize something other over what Allah wants, especially if it comes from our hawa or from our nafs, in that moment, we are just saying that, you know, Allah is less important versus what I want is more important. And a society which teaches me, 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 nafsi, selfie, all this entire movement, even this, this idea of being obsessed with taking pictures of our own selves. What, is that what does selfie translate to in Arabic? Nafsi. It's just about myself. That's in the, this, this whole movement is constantly putting our self at the forefront. But we aren't supposed to be selfless. People. We're supposed to be people who prioritize others, but until we start to really tame ourselves, it becomes very difficult. So let's understand the nafs in a little bit more detail. There are a few different components of the nafs that are articulated by scholars like the likes of Imam Ghazali in the Ahiyah al-Mudin, where he mentions what are the main faculties within the nafs that will really start to cause trouble for us. The first is your appetite, the appetite. The appetite can break down into the appetite, the, the, the appetite for food and which then eventually links into your carnal appetites and your sexual appetites. And this is really the main area where we're supposed to be investing and controlling. That any time of the faculty of discipline, all discipline is rooted in our ability to control our food intake. And the Sahaba, may Allah be pleased with them, were more concerned about what they ate and how much they ate than in doing significant abundant acts of external worship. And they were also very concerned about doing significant acts of external worship. But food intake, where the food comes from, it being pure, and then making sure to eat in, in respectable, limited quantities, this is a core part of our spiritual discipline, which we've forgotten. Even in the month of Ramadan, which is a whole month that Allah is trying to teach us to restrain ourselves, we skip one meal throughout the day and we replace it with four meals at night. Iftar and then, and then dinner and then we go to Taraweeh, then we have another huge meal after Taraweeh, then we go to sleep, then we eat, wake, all what? We're just feeding the nafs. We just delayed, it's just delayed gratification. What we're supposed to be teaching ourselves is actual discipline. So discipline starts at the level of food intake. That's the first thing. And the appetite will be restrained, will be completely unrestrained rather, when food intake is not established. You very rarely see people who are in a state of, of extreme hunger or who are in a state of poverty who act with a lot of arrogance or who just follow every single desire that they have. No, they're, they have, they're very much focused and concerned on that there, there is a state of humility that has been attained when that desire is contained. So this is one thing that we very, 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 very much lost. And so as the scholars, they mentioned that the full stomach now the, is, is one of the main roots of evil and one of the main roots of things uh, and problems that start to start to occur. So that's where the appetite happens. This is directly then linked to carnal desires and to uh, one's sexual appetite. That once someone stops controlling their food intake, now it becomes very difficult to control their impermissible sexual desires. And especially in the time we live in, where you don't even need to be that physically present with anybody. You can literally just be on a device and be scrolling on a device or watching a show or have access to the internet and all sorts of filth exist out there which can completely pollute you to a point where you can actually ruin what is meant to be a, 
a faculty that's channeled in a permissible way, you can actually ruin that through excessive following of one's sexual appetite and viewing things such as pornography and others when, 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 when that will completely, completely, completely damage one's heart. These are diseases. <coughs> If somebody was diagnosed with diabetes, someone is diagnosed with cancer, someone is diagnosed with any other type of disease, most certainly we would start to seek the cure. We would go to a doctor, we'd try to understand what are we supposed to, how can we improve? But these spiritual illnesses are far worse than physical illnesses, why? Because the physical illness, once we leave this world, it leaves with us. But the spiritual disease, it carries on, the punishment continues, or the effects of that continue into the grave and they continue into the akhirah. And we ask Allah for forgiveness and that he pardon our sins because it can continue perpetually into the next life if it's not tamed. So it all goes back to taming these things in this life. It's a little bit of work right now for an immense, immense, immense amount of reward and immense amount of blessings. And it is not haram to have a desire, it's haram to act on the desire. That's a very, very important distinction to make. That just because someone has desires doesn't make them a bad person any type of desire, it's when we say, okay, you know what, I'm just going to ignore it, Allah says, and I'm going to give in and act on that desire. So the appetite, this is the first piece. These are the two components of the appetite. The physical appetite that starts with food, and then it continues into these other carnal appetites. And you usually see this is the maqam of animals, the maqam of, of the station of animals, that they have no constraint over their food. They just want to keep eating and eating. Just this morning, uh, my, my cat, I had forgotten to feed him, and he's just loudly meowing, 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 coming into my office while I'm working, just loudly wants, he wants his food. And there's no discipline. There's not like a, you know, let me just wait five minutes or 10 minutes and just wait for him to be done. No, keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. The human being, when we don't eat, we're not supposed to be like the animal. We have to have a little bit of supper and a little bit of patience. If we start to get angry and, and upset just because we missed a meal, that, that shows we have a major, major, major work to do because we've missed the point of what discipline actually is. Right? Animals, they have to learn discipline and we have to teach it to them. But Allah has taught us how to be disciplined through the, the, his majestic book and through the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi And so we have to read it and apply because the default setting of the human being that you and I are just operating under, with especially having grown up in, in the world that we've grown up in, is to just give in to our appetites. It's to give in to our desires. The second big area with relates to anger and relates to just an inability to control our personality. And anger is the root of arrogance. Anger is the root of argumentation. Many of these diseases, these big, big, big diseases, which are considered major sins of the heart, many of these diseases stem from an inability to control our anger. The one who can discipline their nafs, they do it by disciplining the appetite and by discipline, disciplining their anger, now real discipline starts to take place. Real discipline starts to take place. But when anger is out of control, this results in a whole another set of problems. Usually problems between us and other individuals. Usually problems between us and our families. And so you evaluate where you and I are at with anger with how quickly we want to lash out at people. And then with how much we actually do so. There's one thing to want to do it and to restrain ourselves. Alhamdulillah, that's a very good thing if we can restrain ourselves. There's a whole other thing if something happens to us and we just completely unleash on somebody and we have no ability to control our anger. And this is especially the case in our home environments. This is especially the case, as the Prophet ﷺ said, the best of you uh, is, uh, are those who are best to their families or the best to their wives. And I am the best to my family, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He that was extremely accommodating at home, extremely accommodating at home. It, it was not this type of environment where a little slip happens and just lash out, lash out, lash out. Where are we at with our anger? There is no spiritual progress if we cannot channel our anger in the appropriate direction, which only means that we get angry for the sake of Allah to the right amount at the right time, applied with wisdom in the right way, which, which is very, very, very difficult to do. And so the vast majority of us, the main goal should just be to control our anger, to control our anger. And this stems very much from what? From the ego. That sometimes you get offended. Don't you know who I am? Don't you know this? What are you saying to me? This is all the nafs. This is all the nafs. One of the, that it's, it's mentioned, in the, uh, mentioned in the books that a man was walking around with, with, with the whole entourage, saying, you know, and someone got in his way, don't you know who I am? Don't, you know, just this, this ego coming out, right? Getting upset that how dare you get in my way? And, and, and one of the people of wisdom reprimanded him, say, yeah, we know who you are. You were created from a drop of fluid. 
from a, from a drop of, of dirty fluid. That's what you were created from. While you live this life, you carry in between you, in between your true sides, excrement. And you will go into the ground and you will rot as a corpse. So that's who you are as a human being. So if, you, if the ego comes out, and this you, many times tends to be a trait in us men, I would say more so, um, uh, but, but not always, but the, the desire to just want to show the ego, the desire, that has to be constrained. This arrogant kind of pompness that, that exists, that has to be contain, uh, that, that contained. Because we are, we are, who are we? We are Abdullah. We are khuliq uh, al-uns, that we created the human being weak, Allah says. Ba'ifa, weak, very, very weak. If Allah wanted to, in any, any one of our organs or something just stopped working, we would be done for. We couldn't do anything. We would be completely crippled. So why do we let the nafs, because the nafs is all smoke and mirrors. That's what it is at the end of the day. It's all fake stuff. It's all fake reality. It's not real. It's waham. It's just empty thoughts. We think something. It's not the case. We are in reality. We are, we are humble, humble slaves before Allah. We are incapable of anything if Allah does not will it. As Allah says in the Quran, the human being, you can't even that catch, uh, that create the wing of a fly. If a fly stole something from you, you can't even catch it. You can't even get it back. So then who are we thinking? But this comes from the anger that the nafs has. And then most of the argumentation and the problems that happen in our life, are, uh, especially in our family life, come from this. I know people, literally, they've cut off their own children because they were offended over something that was said. Some, after, after spending years and years and years and years putting in the hard work to raise the children and then offended over a, a, an argument that happened. And then not talking for years. Sometimes even living in the same place, in the same home, and not speaking to each other. Why? Because the ego is offended. The way to control this is to learn how to apologize. To learn how to actually say sorry to somebody. That's a, that, that is a few words, but the nafs hates it. It hates to say, I'm sorry. Does not like it at all. It, it wants to be told, it wants to be recognized, it wants to be put on a pedestal. No, I know you, you know, you didn't do anything wrong. I was the one who did wrong. And then the nafs likes it, but it hates to be the first one to go and say, you know what, I made a mistake. You know what, I'm sorry. Even if it wasn't the one who made a mistake, to actually do that. But there are then multiple other ways, we'll talk about just in a second, what to actually begin to contr control the anger. And then the third main area is sloth and laziness and just distracted, just general distractibility. And this is the time that we are living in. That the nafs inclines towards not wanting to do anything at all. Procrastination and just having everything done for it. So it doesn't want to wake up in the morning. It doesn't want to pray Fajr. It doesn't want to recite Quran. It doesn't want to pray any of the other prayers, really. All it wants to do is what? Keep pressing a button and clicking next show. Okay, and then without you even saying the next show, now it, the next show just starts. And you just keep doing it. It just wants to let it sit in a world of entertainment. Keep, give them circus and give them food and let them just let their lives pass away. This is the way that, that, the, that the Romans, they, they used to control the masses. They just let, this is how to control them. You give them entertainment. And so it just wants to keep scrolling. The next video, the next video, the, the continuous, continuous scroll, the endless scroll. Next thing you know, two hours have gone by. And we miss the prayer. We miss this. That's what the nafs wants to do. Distractibility. This is... A, the amount of distractions that exist in the time that we live in, it's unparalleled compared to what used to exist in, in, in the past. You'd need a person there or something there to distract you. Again, we can just be completely by ourselves and still not be able to find ways to use our time wisely. And so these are the chief ways. Some, there's just three of the different ways. The appetites, the anger that then results in argumentation and arrogance, and an immense amount of distractibility which results in just overall spiritual sloth and procrastination. And now these, these traits, they, when they are all existent inside of us, we really struggle with spiritual development. And when you struggle with spiritual development, all sorts of other issues start to emerge. Anxiety, stress, depression, worry, a lack of purpose, not knowing what we're supposed to be doing. All of these things begin to happen, and, but the route is very clearly there. Allah and His Messenger وسلم, have told us exactly what we need to do in order to discipline the nafs. Aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammadin. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون. That the reality is that this concept of taqwa is the cure 
for taming the nafs because taqwa is to be conscious of Allah and mindful of Allah in every single moment. And when someone is really, really witnessing that Allah is present and Allah is watching them and Allah knows exactly what they are doing, then it becomes, we will not want to just follow our desire. We will not want to lash out. We will not want to be lazy. We will want to have a, we will have a very, very, very deep purpose. And so the way that we go about establishing this, we've been, you know, doing this, alhamdulillah, for the most part in some portion of our life, throughout, throughout our life, but we have to then create a dedicated plan. There is the general kind of over-the-counter medicine for these diseases, and then depending on how deep-rooted the disease is in someone, there's the very specific prescription. The general medicine that to tame the nafs begins, as we mentioned, with disciplining the food intake. This is mentioned by Imam Ghazali in Lehya, that on his book on controlling the appetite. So disciplining the food, it sounds um, uh, that especially in our time, it doesn't always make sense, but that's why we have a whole month of this, of literally not eating for um, uh, that, that from early morning until the evening, from literally not doing that because it's teach, supposed to teach discipline. So we start with that. And all we need to do is cut back a little bit, especially on days when the desire beat us. Don't, and this is what the scholars say, they say literally, don't give your nafs dessert on a day when it didn't obey you. So if you always eat ice cream every night or cake or whatever else it is, there has to be certain days you say, nope, not having it. Just like an animal when you discipline, you can't just give them treats all of the time. Because if you do that, then they're never going to actually listen to you when you need to use the treat for some type of incentive. You have to treat the nafs and exchange, exchange with it in that way. It is this constant exchange going back and forth with the nafs. And so limiting the food intake in some way, shape, or form, missing a snack that we usually eat, whatever else it is, keeping the stomach light to a degree. But for those, the, 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 for the children in the room, this is not an excuse for when your parents say to eat lunch, to say, no, 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 I'm gonna skip lunch or skip a meal. That's not what we're talking about. This is when you're actually trying to just control our intake, right? Listening to, the, listening to our parents and our elders that takes, takes precedence over, over all these things. And it's a major sin to disobey our parents. So I just wanted to make sure that's very clear. The second thing then, uh, that with regards to disciplining the nafs, is to sometimes just give it a lot of worship to do. And a lot for us, if we're struggling to pray five times a day, may just be the five daily prayers. If we're already doing the five daily prayers and the nafs is now starting to find other ways to mess up our ibadah or to mess up our relationship with Allah through ostentation and through arrogant display of our actions and so on, then we increase the amount of worship. We now add in that the night prayer, that the hajjat prayer, we, we add in other dhikr that we have to do throughout the day. Whatever state that we're at, we should always be ready to increase and to do more. That as our teachers have taught us, we should have a year Within a year, okay, we have a certain amount that we do, and then the next year comes around, and we say, okay, now I'm going to add another 10 minutes of ibadah, or another dhikr that I'm supposed to do, or another surah that I'm going to recite every day, or another portion of the Qur'an that I'm going to take on. But increase it, because what happens is this is spiritual exercise. And just like anybody who's ever done physical exercise, you get to a point where if you continue to lift the same amount of weight for a long period of time, you're not gonna have any impact on, on if you're trying to get more, more muscular strength or whatever else it is, it's just gonna remain flat. You have to now increase the weight and then increase the weight more, same thing spiritually. You can't just do the same thing our entire life and expect it to work. We have to add more, both quality and quantity. So this is the second thing. And it starts with the five daily prayers. And then all of us should have a portion of reading the sunnah du'as of the Prophet in the morning and the evening. Compilations like the Wird al-Latif of Imam al-Haddad, the Ratib al-Haddad, some of these other compilations are a good one. The Wird of Imam al -Nawi. we should take on. These takes seven minutes to do. It could be done in a commute and just listening to it till one memorizes it. But this is better than listening to NPR or whatever other music, whatever we're listening to, just have a little extra dhikr that we do. And then, the third way to do it is by decreasing the amount that we speak. By decreasing the amount that we speak. And this is not that we just sit there and be silent, but rather, when we want to say something that is to praise ourselves or to make ourselves the center of the conversation, just hold back for that conversation. When you want to say something to lash out at someone else, just hold back. Restrain, the restraint, control the tongue, control the tongue, because the nafs, what it likes to do is you're in a conversation, you're hanging out with people, and now it likes to be, you know, I want to be the center of a conversation. I, oh, well, you know what I accomplished, you know, I did this at work, I did this. It's all about me, me, me. No, no, let it be about other people every now and then. Just give it, to, and now the nafs will actually start to be disciplined, and it won't want to be the center of conversation. The Prophet ﷺ spoke seldomly. He did not speak that frequently. He said, whoever that believes in Allah in the last day, let, let them speak good or remain silent. 
or let them mind their own business. So when we want to get into a conversation about other, other people or topics that have no relevance to us, just to control the tongue. These might seem like small things, but the food intake being controlled, increasing our ibadah, and then controlling our tongue, you will start to see literally a spiritual alchemy begin to happen. A spiritual purification starts to happen internally. And that is the point of our religion. That the worship we do is not just for physical movements or ritualistic outward practices. There is meaning to it. And these are, the meanings can be unlocked when we apply these things in the right way. Just like when medicine is applied in the right way, healing actually happens. That the Prophet ﷺ is the best spiritual healer. And he gave us all of these different things to do. And when we follow what he wants us to do, وسلم, we will now start to have this internal healing. And you will now go from a state where it seems like a drag to worship. It seems boring. We don't want to do it. It's just, I got to do it because I, I was told to, to now someone actually wants to. They start to taste the halawa, the sweetness of faith. And that is the direction that we want to trend towards. And then what the best thing that happens, and we'll end with this, is that the problems that happen in our life, either that are just between ourselves and our own issues, or between ourselves and other people, ourselves and our family, they start to be mitigated. They start to go away. Actual harmony starts to enter into our life because the nafs starts to become disciplined and we start to realize the purpose of our life. The purpose of our life is to worship Allah and to attain a state of purity in this life. Whoever purifies themselves is successful and whoever does not is destroyed. We want to be among the people who are successful in this life and the next and we want to be with Allah and His Messenger وسلم, in the next life and all it takes is a little bit of extra effort and making the intention and then putting in the work right now for whatever moments of life that we have left. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات المسلمين والمسلمات يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا كريم يا شافي يا لطيف يا الله we ask Allah through your rahmah that you allow us to tame our nufus ya Allah and the evil within us ya Allah and that you tame our ego يا رب العالمين في خير والوطف والعافية يا الله and we ask that you Allow us, Ya Allah, to turn to you in every moment and that you allow us to become from the muttaqeen, Ya Rabbil Alameen, Ya Allah, and that you allow our desires to be in completely in accordance with what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brought and that you give us an immense, immense increase in love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya 